Yeah. So tired. Well, finally I got the video done. I actually did it just a day or two ago, but I botched up the audio recording. Things just didn't go my way. And I didn't rush for publishing it when the embargo was lifted because I want to take it slow. You know, relax, relax, right and five, relax. So here it is, the video for the performance review of the Ryzen 5 1600X and 1500X. More details right after this. Now let's begin by getting to know a bit of these processors. Now these processors were made available on April 11th itself and you need to know that the Ryzen 5 1500X is a 4 cost 8 thread processor with 3.5 GHz base clock and 3.7 GHz boost clock and it retails at RM899. The bigger brother which is the Ryzen 5 1600X has 6 cores, 12 threads, a base clock of 3.6 GHz and a boost clock of 4 GHz and retails at RM1199. And as you can see, the 1600X is pretty much like the 1800 X. The only difference between the Ryzen 5 1600X and the Ryzen 7 1800X, well, other than price, is that one has 8 cores and 16 tracks, while this Ryzen 5 model has 6 cores, 12 tracks. Now that we have this uh, introduction of the Ryzen 5 models, 1500X and 1600X settled, let's have a look at the performance. I will have synthetic benchmarks, real world benchmark using Adobe Premiere Pro and of course the gaming benchmarks. Now let's start with Cinebench R15. Now on the Cinebench R15, you see that the 1600X performs very well, very close to the Ryzen 7 1700, while the 1500X is behind both of these models. While the Intel's Core i7-7700K hovers between the 1500X and the 1600X. Moving forward with the 3D Mark V Strike score, you see again the 1500X is behind the 1600X, which is very close. In fact, overtaking the 1700. Well, what I can explain from this is that it looks like the 3D Mark V Strike test is uh, taking advantage of the clock speed, of which the 1700 does not have. The 1700 runs only at 3 GHz base clock. The Intel Core i7 7700K, on the other hand, performs similarly to the Ryzen 5 1500X. Next up, we have the CPU, the benchmark tool. Again, a similar pattern. You see that the 1600X, regardless of clock, comes very close to the 1700, while the 1500X is behind and performs very similarly to the Intel Core i7 7700K. And now we have the Adobe Premiere Pro rendering test. For the Full HD test, you will see that only the Ryzen 5 1500X lags behind the crowd. The rest of the processors here, well, their numbers are similar. Then there's the 4K UHD rendering. Now on this part, you see that well, the Ryzen 5 1500X still lags behind the crowd, while the 1600X is an interesting one. The 1600X on stock is as fast as an Intel Core i7 7700K, and once overclocked, it runs as fast as a Ryzen 7 1700. Up next, we have the gaming benchmarks. You will see that the Ryzen setups, whether it's Ryzen 5, Ryzen 7, they perform similarly across the board. You'll notice that the patterns are quite similar and that some on, the, on some games, you see that the performance gains when A, they have more cores, or B, that it has a faster clock speed. Take for example, the Ryzen 5. When it's overclocked to 4 GHz, there are some improvements on the frame rates. On with the next slide, again, you will see similar pattern for the Ryzen setup, regardless Ryzen 5 or Ryzen 7. All of them still lag behind the Intel setup. But the Intel processor here, which I'm using for the gaming benchmark, is the 5960X overclocked, and it pushes the GTX 1080 really well. Now, that's not that's not to say that the Ryzen setup aren't good for gaming. It's just that on high-end GPUs, the Ryzen system 
just doesn't push the card well and let me be clear on that it doesn't push well only on certain titles and of course the gap between the Intel setup and the Ryzen setup will be far less when it comes to higher gaming resolution. So that's it for the performance benchmarks. As for the temperature, I'm using the Noctua NH U12 SSE AM4 of which AMD provided us during this uh, AMD's uh, Ryzen Tech Day. The 1500X is very well controlled even under overclocking situations. I push it to 4GHz with 4.5 V-Core boost, it's fine. 1600X on the other hand runs hot so if you are going to overclock this one I recommend you get a, um, that you get a better well, just a cooling system so what do I think of the Ryzen 5 1500X and 1600X well I think they are excellent processors if you can't go for the 1700 that costs RM 1599 there's always these models they do well in games they do uh, well for work and and well, some of you may think Ryzen is not good for gaming. Is it so? No. Get this straight. The Ryzen processors are fine for gaming. You see, there's a difference between unable to game and unable to push high-end GPUs. Now, the thing here about the Ryzen setup is it game is fine. It just has problem pushing high-end GPUs on certain titles only. Yes, only on certain titles. So don't worry about it my advice is if you have a Ryzen setup don't worry it will be able to game just that please don't spend RM2599 for a, a Ryzen 7 1800X just to play games now that doesn't make sense the 1800X is for productivity purpose if for gaming purpose I recommend going for this R5 or this Ryzen 5 the 1600X or get yourself a 1700 and overclock it if you may if for balance of work and play but gaming purpose you want it cost effective definitely just go with the Ryzen 5 1600, uh, 1600X the 1500X they're, they're fine they're really sufficient for gaming purpose so alright that's it for this video thank you for watching do remember to subscribe this, to this channel if you haven't and I'll see you in my upcoming videos thank you for watching